Now let's move on to working on design. So first of all, I can just uh, uh, select this table here. Uh, we can actually select the entire thing and delete it. Um, and then we're going to start fresh. So we're going to go to Insert. And you can see that there's different tables, different layouts. And uh, one of the, you know, SharePoint typically uses a two column layout, but we can actually use four column layouts. And you can see that there's also different four column layouts that we have here. Doesn't matter which one we choose. And uh, so you could see there's a heading here. So we're, it says here, click to add heading. We're going to call this lab accident report. And then what we can start doing is we can um, start putting our controls. So notice uh, the controls being uh, the fields in here and labeling them properly. So we can um, just essentially drag and drop the fields, uh, the fields onto the layout now. So if we just do type, you can see that type went through there. But notice that the type itself is right there. So we... Um, and just take it like this and uh, type in type in here. So just like that. And then we'll continue the process for all the other fields. So we'll do title. Actually, we can call this accident type type and we'll continue with other things so accident description so we'll put the description in here notice that the description could actually be quite large so what we'll do is we'll select this the cells here and um, we have an option to merge cells. So now you can see that our accident description is going to be a little longer. So for the next control, we'll we'll put date and time in here. We can use some of this cut and paste. And let's move that up. So there's date and time. And uh, for the next control, it'll be location. And of course, um, you know, if we want to add more uh, to the state to this table, we can do insert rows below, and it just adds more rows to uh, for us to add options. So let's do root cause. Let's do corrective actions. And what I'm going to do for the corrective actions, I'll actually we'll merge the cells here. So let's uh, select both of the cells and let's merge them. Should have actually started this way, so you can see corrective actions. It's going to be available like this. Now let's clean up the rest of it. I'm just going to delete it for now. And what I'd like to do at this point is I would like to publish this and make sure that so far everything is progressing like I intended it to. So we're going to go to File. And notice that there is a Quick Publish. It shows where it's going to be published. So we're going to click Quick Publish. And it says um, that it's been published. And we can just go directly to the list. And you can see that there is lab accident reports. Notice that all the fields have come, come through. And when we click on an add a new item, we should be able to see our form. So there's our lab accident report. So there is the accident type, the title, accident description, date and time, root cause, and corrective actions.
which is, which is a multiple choice. So it's exactly like we intended it to be so far. So let's go back into designer, into InfoBab designer. Next, we're going to insert the chemical spill options section. So let's click home. Let's click at the bottom here. And let's go to the controls. And in the controls, you'll see the very last control, which is important. It's a, it's a section control. So notice that um, I clicked it twice, so we got two sections added. For now, we, we just need uh, just need one section, so let's just remove one of them. And uh, so this is going to be uh, the section where I'm going to have all the you know chemical spill options. So now that I have the section, I'm going to go to Insert, and just like I did before, we're going to insert a four-column layout here. So then we'll call it Chemical Spills. Now we just need to add the fields that are, that are related to the chemical spill. So amount, amount of chemical spilled and uh, type of chemical spilled. And then we can delete the rest of it. So amount of chemical spilled and type of chemical spilled. And so that's, that's it for our section. Now we only want this section to appear if in the drop down here somebody selects chemical spill. Okay. So how do we do this? We're going to go back to home and um, we're going to click on manage rules. So essentially we can set up uh, we can set up rules for you know for a specific section. We could say show any show the section only if something matches. So now we just need to select the control. Let's click to select it and now we're able to select the rules. So we'll choose formatting, and that's our rule. And so what's the condition? The condition is that the type field is equal, and uh, we can type in type text, chemical spill. So that was our option. So if, if the accident type is chemical spill, then we want to uh, to show this section. So if it's not equal to chemical spill, then we want to hide this control. Okay, so that's our rule. Okay, so let's save that. So now let's go to, to file. Let's do a quick publish. Let's go to the list. We'll add a new item. Or let, let's try it again, add a new item. And now if I select general, nothing should happen. But if I select chemical spill, not, notice that there's another section that appears here. Again, if I deselect it, the section will disappear. So we can close this and we can go back to our form. So now let's repeat the process for the fire options. Again, from the beginning, uh, we clicked in here and we inserted another section, which was hidden at the bottom here. Click within the section, insert, four column layout. And so for the fire, we have type of fire, fire length. We'll delete the rest of it. Call it fire options. Now we just need to select the entire section and set up a new rule. And the condition is going to be very similar to what we had before. Type is not equal to fire. And then click OK.
So that's our fire section. And let's add another section. And this is going to deal with injury, but we are going to set up a different rule in there. So let's go back to home. Section. Insert for column layout and uh, call this injury options. And we'll put injured person and injury response and delete the other two. Now for the rules for this, we're going to do something a bit different. Um, well, it'll also be formatting, but the condition is where we're going to do something a bit different. So for the condition, we're going to be looking at the description and uh, so we're going to hide it when the description doesn't contain the word injury. And, uh, and then we'll do hide. By the way, I do need to check, I think, on the fire options. If we go back to the fire options and look at the rules, we do need to hide the control when it's not equal to, to fire. All right, so let's, let's save this. Uh, let's do a quick publish. Go to the list. Notice I keep opening new tabs so we actually can close some of the other ones. We're already opened. And uh, add a new item. All right, so we know that if you choose chemical spill, uh, there's the chemical spill options. If you choose fire, there's fire options. And uh, if even, you know, if we're on fire, and if I type injury and then scroll down, notice there's injury options. But if I ha just type something test, you know, test and deselect this field, notice that the injury options don't show up. So as long as there is an injury in the accident description, that's how that section shows up. Now let's go back to the form. We're going to do some additional formatting. For example, for the date, instead of using just the manage rules and coming up with the custom rules, we're going to let uh, InfoPath come up with some rules or predefined rules. So we'll say if the date is in the future, then that's bad. It's going to be red. We'll go to the amount of chemicals spilled. This one is going to be a little more complicated. We'll add a number of rules. So we'll say if it's less than one, then it's good. Then if it's in between one and two, then that's neutral. And then finally, if it's going to be more than, greater than two, then it's bad. Again, so let's test this out. I'm going to go to File, Quick Publish. Add new item. And notice that if I select date time here, put it in the future, it's red. And uh, let's do a chemical spill. Okay, so if the value is three, remember it's going to be red. If the value is um, 0 0.5, it's green. If it's a value 1.5, it's neutral. Okay, so that's, that's just some of the conditional highlighting formatting that we can do. So let's close this.